welcome everybody. Um, our, our presentation is basically about uh, a rapid assessment that we carried uh, out way back in 2014, in August, following uh, complaints that we received from communities. And if I may use their words, uh, they, they, they indicated that uh, something very abnormal was uh, happening with uh, their water sources uh, because uh, they were actually getting something red uh, he, instead of getting water from the bore hole. So that triggered us to Our investigate the way it is structured on the screen. Uh, we are going to give a brief introduction to water aids work that is in Uganda here. Then we look at hand pump policies in Uganda. Then also look at the background of corrosion issues in water aids work. I slightly indicated something on that earlier. Then uh, give the description and the discussion of, of our field activities. Um, then the research results, as well as the discussion of corrosion resistant alternatives. Uh, we shall also talk about the supply chain of some of the materials that we think can, uh, can provide alternatives to, uh, uh, to galvanize materials. Uh, to introduce, uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, WaterAid is an international organization. We exclusively work on WASH in 26 countries, but specifically in Uganda, WaterAid operates in, about, in six rural districts uh, and one city and uh, two small towns. Um, the, the small towns and the districts are located in, in the northeastern part of the country. Our ultimate goal is to transform lives of the poor through integrating wash service, service delivery uh, coupled with the capacity building and policy advocacy. Uh, we do work with the partners, mainly the district local government partners and uh, other civil society organizations to deliver what services. Um, let's look at the UNPAM policies in Uganda. Mm, Uganda has standardized to use three uh, pumps, that is the Indian Mark II, and also use three, Indian Mark III and pump. This happened in 1999. Uh, a specification of U3 modified uh, was developed. We shall look at this let, later on in the presentation, but this happened in, in the year 2001. Uh, the, U3, the U3 modified pumps is, is a corrosion resistant, but can only be installed to 45 meters in depth. Um, as I indicated earlier on in the introduction, uh, we, in these communities uh, that uh, we assessed or we carried out the research in, uh, we registered the complaints of brown water in the boa holes. As you can see, uh, the picture indicated uh, really something brown coming out of the boa hole and to communities, actually this was so alarming because they thought this was blood. So um, this water, sometimes it will, in the morning it would be clear, but then for those who are lucky to collect it, clear as it could be, uh, they attempted to use it for cooking and uh, making tea, but the end result would turn out to be that it, the food or tea would turn black. So as a result of this, the community abandoned water facilities and they went back to the swamp, the stream. It is also good to note that some of these uh, water facilities were constructed in a period not less than one year. So you can imagine every investment abandoned within a period of, of six months, that is to say. And uh, we also noted that uh, as they went back to the swamps, to the stream water, they were getting so much exposed to health hazards. So WaterAid and Partners uh, conducted a research which we call APOGRO. This is unlocking the potential of underground water for the rural poor. 
in the two districts. Now, these, are, these districts are called Amuria and Katakwe. All these are in the northeastern part of Uganda. And the ultimate goal of this research was just to strengthen the evidence base on the sustainability of rural water supply. Both water aid and uh, non-water aid boreholes were investigated. Maybe to throw more light on this, what we will meant here is that uh, it was not only the boreholes con constructed by water aid that were having this kind of abnormality. Uh, other boreholes con constructed by our partners, including government, also experienced this problem. So basically what we did in order to uncover or to discover what was going on, we decided to carry out a field test where, where we launched an investigation into a possible cause. And uh, basically we did the site test using uh, field test kits. And uh, also we collected some samples that we later on sent to the government laboratory. For some of you who are very familiar with Uganda, you know the government has a, a national laboratory in Entebbe. Um, so um, at the site, we use a color comparator of iron, uh, where the corresponding uh, the corresponding color indicated the amount of concentration of iron in the sample. You can see from the from the picture on your right. Uh, on the left. Yeah, um, the interpretation of our results using that uh, uh, small kit at the site, uh, we realized that a number of bar holes fitted with the U2 pumps were GI, which were GIs. In other words, GIs I mean uh, galvanized. Yeah. These bar holes were fitted with galvanized materials. Now, in order to determine the amount of concentration of iron in the in the, in these uh, boreholes, we we locked the boreholes locally and uh, we let it settle for for the entire night. So very early in the morning, a team of water aid and uh, and, and partners uh, visited these boreholes and where the the first to pump. So basically what we did, we pumped continuously for two hours with an interval of 30 minutes where we could uh, collect samples and, uh, and uh, subject to the test. As you can see from the picture, the first, the first uh, specimen was uh, where the test was uh, carried out, uh, was collected at the very start of the pump then the second specimen, that whole sample was collected after two hours, then it continued until two hours. Now, as you can see from the illustration, uh, this implies that uh, when water remains in the pipes for some time, the level of corrosion is in the pipe tends to be higher, thus releasing iron into water. Um, we went ahead to remove some, uh, some of the pipes from some of these affected uh, boreholes, and indeed, we were able to ascertain that uh, corrosion was taking place in these uh, U2 pumps. Um, the, the implication is that uh, the corrosion eventually makes the pipes leak and sub subsequently breaking the bar all down, as I said, within a period of less than one year. Um, the picture you are seeing is of some of the pipes that we pulled out from some uh, from the affected bar holes. Um, when we pumped uh, some of these uh, facilities aggressively, these are some of the, the residues that came out uh, out of the pumps, you can see from the picture. Then uh, we also did a similar test with the U3 modified. A U3 modified pump, if I may uh, give a little, 
a little bit of a little explanation about it is that instead of using the galvanized material, the pipes, uh, they are fitted with the plastic razors. These are plastic pipes. And when we conducted uh, a similar test uh, on the U3 modified, these are the results we found out. The water was quite clear. Though with some low, low concentration of iron, we believe that was coming from the <coughs> aquifer. So with this problem, we ask ourselves what could be the solution or alternatives, because we were able to conclude that uh, this problem is resulting from the galvanized uh, uh, pipes. Um, the solution, the possible solution that uh, we identified was, uh, was in the use of the stainless steel, because we know it does not corrode. Um, we, we, we realized that a borehole in Uganda cost about 20 million. That's approximately $5,500. Uh, uh, While uh, that's the one fitted with a galvanized material. While the one fitted with stainless steel cost about 22 million. This is not a big variation, and yet it presents a, a very good alternative. Uh, the picture you are seing is of uh, uh, U3 modified. Uh, these are some of the plastic materials uh, that are available here in Uganda that can be used. Um, the problem with the U3 modified that we notice is that uh, it can only be installed uh, within the depth of not uh, not between 35, 30 to 35 uh, meters. It cannot go beyond. So the picture you're seeing here are some of the illustration of, uh, of some of the pumps that we visited with, fitted with uh, utility modified. Um, maybe to take you through some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two alternatives, starting with, uh, with the stainless steel uh, pipes. Uh, the, the first advantage is that it does not corrode. It is easy to work with as they do not break. Then uh, glue, good flow rate. Then uh, the, our hand pump mechanics are knowledgeable in repairing uh, facilities fitted with this uh, uh, stainless steel. However, it also has some limitations because uh, these pipes are not readily available in Uganda, that's why we were seeing a variation in the total cost of investment uh, between the, the, the facilities fitted with galvanized and stainless steel. Then, uh, yes, it is very expensive, especially for the rural communities. Then um, carrying out repairs is uh, sometimes tedious as it involves uh, overhauling the whole system. Um, advantages and disadvantages of U2 modified. These are the, the, the pumps fitted with uh, plastic razors. The first advantage, just like the stainless steel, is that it does not corrode. It equally has a good flow rate. It is uh, affordable. And, and our hand pump mechanics are knowledgeable <coughs> in repair. Though there are some limitations where some of these pipes are not readily available, in some of the locations here, you need to make an order and wait for some time for them to be delivered. Uh, as we noted, also it has limitation in terms of installation there, uh, and sometimes if not well handled, it leads to the breakage of the socket. Then uh, repairing also involves overhauling the, the system, the whole system, with, uh, with, of course, some little bit of extra care to avoid breakages. And also, we know that uh, the repairs of some of these pumps fitted with uh, plastic razors need specific tools uh, 
to be used by the unfarm mechanics. Some of these tools are not uh, easily available in Uganda. <coughs> okay, um, I, I would like to hand you over to my colleague, Jacinta, who will take us through the advantages and disadvantages of using modified. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bonnie. Uh, just to quickly look at the uh, advantages and, this, and the advantages of the U3 modified. Just like the stainless steel and the U2 modified, it doesn't corrode. It's soft in terms of pumping. It has a it's a low it has a, a low flow rate, and therefore it can be used in low yielding boreholes. But also, it's easy for the mechanics to be able to carry out repairs. In terms of limitations, um, it has a, a low flow rate. It's difficult in pulling out these pipes because they are glued together, and the, hence you, one would need more labor force in terms of um, poking them out. But also it has limitations in the installation depth. But the, the other issue we have also discovered with these pumps is that not all mechanics have the knowledge to be able to repair them. But also in terms of availability, we don't have uh, local dealers within these locations uh, where they are installed. So they would have to come to all the way to Kampala to buy the pump parts. Now, in terms of uh, our advocacy and our call, having gone through this and the all, based on all this experience from the field, we are saying we do not need to go on installing galvanized um, uh, pump components in aggressive groundwater, we could use alternatives. For example, the stainless steel or the U3 modified. But we need also to embrace this shift uh, to stainless steel pipes and rods, but also to be able to trigger demand for them within the countries so that people know that there is this big problem with the GI pipes and that people need to shift uh, to stainless steel uh, pipes. Because like my colleague said, there is no use to spend so much money and you invest in a borehole and it's breaking down within six months or one year. So we need to trigger demand for them. And this is when the private sector will also be able to bring them into the market. And maybe that will also reduce the cost eventually. But like we said, there are issues around skills of hand pump mechanics to be able to repair, especially the U3 modified pump. So we need to equip these mechanics with the skills to be able to do the repairs, but also engage the private sector to be able to uh, supply quality parts. Because we have found out that in Uganda this is also an issue, and so we started to engage already with the ministry to see how private sector can be engaged to be able to supply quality parts. So we believe that together, we can actually solve the problem of iron in boreholes. Thank you so much for listening. So we welcome some maybe remarks, some contributions, questions. some questions, if any, for us.